What's good guys, Tyler back, GK Gold Remy. Now, I originally thought this was gonna be a new signing video for you guys, but obviously you can tell by the thumbnail and the title that that is not the case. So instead, today I'm gonna be going over two contracts that I've been offered in my career and just going over some red flags, some things you guys need to look out for and really pay attention to if you ever find yourself in a contract negotiation with a club. Now for these two contracts, there's not really a better name for them other than just being predatory contracts. And luckily in the US, this is becoming less and less of an issue for us where obviously you have the MLS, very well paid in that league. And we also have the USL championship in our second tier, USL league one in our third tier. And those also have minimum salaries and compensation that clubs have to offer you when you sign with them. However, over in Europe, these predatory contracts are also extremely common, especially in the lower or mid tiers of any leagues over there, where I think a lot of them also do not have minimum salaries. So a club can really offer you whatever they want. And then your final decision is if you're gonna take that offer or leave it and search for something better. Now I've seen videos from other YouTubers talking about kind of the same issues that I'm going to talk about here. A lot of their focus is talking about how it's, you know, unfair for clubs to be trying to get players to play for free or only paying them a couple hundred dollars a month. And honestly, I think that that's just something a lot of you guys are going to have to accept is going to be happening when you're trying to play a game and get paid for it. There's just so many players that are trying to do the same thing as you guys where they're just trying to follow their dreams. Like this is since they've been a kid, this is what they want to do. They want to play professional football, soccer, whatever you want to call it. And it just creates such a high demand for players to try to find clubs where say you don't want to take this $200 contract, there's going to be someone else that is going to take that where they're in the position that they can or desperate enough that they will. So I honestly don't have a huge issue with clubs offering these types of contracts because at the end of the day, no one's forcing you to sign anything. There's not a gun being put to your head. If you get offered something that you think is just extremely ridiculous, you can just say, no, I'm not gonna do that. And that's just the end of that story. So the first contract I'm gonna talk about was the one that I was offered this winter and that's with the Maryland Bobcats and NISA. Now, while NISA is a pro sanctioned league in the US, they don't have any minimum standards for salary, contracts, housing, anything like that. So any club in NISA can essentially offer you whatever they want, including just nothing. And the first big red flag that I experienced with this contract offer is just the fact that when they're emailing the agent that I was going through, that they would keep saying that something has to be signed today. So they'd send a contract offer maybe at three o'clock in the afternoon after we finished training and everything to my agent. And then they'd say, hey, if you're gonna sign this, it needs to be signed by 5 p.m. today. And it's just really rare, guys, that a club needs to have a contract signed at such a timely manner like that, unless you're working against transfer deadlines or you're worried about your ITCs not clearing in time or something like that. But with a club that's still in preseason, there's no reason that by time you get a contract offer that you should need to sign it within three or four hours from reading it. And the main reason a club would do this is just to try to put a little more pressure on you. Maybe you make a rash decision and sign the contract without really, you know, thinking of all the consequences of doing that. So if someone does this, and again, the transfer window isn't an issue, you guys don't stress about it. Just do what I did. You just ignore that email, come to training the next morning and very likely chance just nothing's going to be said, which is what happened. I got this email, I think maybe on a Wednesday, Thursday, go to training in the morning, go to training, everything's normal. And we're still just in contract negotiation like we were before. It's not, it's just a fake deadline and just don't fall for them. So here I'll go over the actual contract offer and just explain why I didn't feel comfortable signing it myself. So this contract, it's pretty long in general. This one's about 11 pages. I'm really just going to be going over the meat of it. But you guys just make sure that if you're ever in a position to sign something like this, read the whole thing. Don't just go to what you think is important. Make sure you read through the entire contract because you never want to be signing something where you don't know 100% of what you're agreeing to. So you can see here what the actual salary would be, which I'm sure will shock a fair amount of you, is it was only set for $200 a month. And a lot of you might be wondering, is like, what on earth are you doing trying to sign a contract for only $200 a month? And there's a couple of reasons why I was more interested in signing here for the Maryland Bobcats than I was with some of our interest I got from other clubs in the US also where 
they were offering a more traditional salary or something that you'd probably expect kind of in the lower mid tiers of U.S. soccer. So the big one is that this is a local club. It's a club that I can drive to from where I'm currently or already am living. I'm around my friends, family, everything like that. It's just very easy transition. I don't have to move anywhere. I don't have to you know, sort out any new housing issues or anything like that. I know that when I'm off the field, I'm gonna be in a comfortable situation. And again, with it being local, I have a lot of good coaching opportunities that I do when I'm in the DC area where even getting paid 200 a month from this club here and being able to coach on the side, I'd be making a lot more money than if I took a more traditional US contract in another state or city. Another reason I was okay with the salary is this was really only supposed to be about for three months where I played at the club for three months and then I was planning on going back overseas during the summer transfer window. And I was assuming that if I was offering to play for Peanuts where it wasn't even gonna cover my gas money that I'd have a bit more leverage saying that, okay, I'll play for essentially for free if you just let me leave when I wanna leave over the summer. And I would have a bit more leverage that way than if I was with a club paying me more traditional salary where they're actually investing money in me that sometimes then it's a little tougher to try to leave. However, that wasn't the case at all with this contract offer where you gotta just scroll down a little bit farther to the buyout clause where it states, club will immediately release player if an organization wishes to acquire the services of the player under contract to pay the amount as follows to the club. So NISA, USL2, $2,000. It's pretty much saying if I wanna to go to a NISA, another NISA team or a USL2 team, that club would have to pay $2,000 to be able to acquire me. USL championship, $6,000 and honestly guys no one's buying me for $6,000 right now it's just not happening and then this is the part where it's just it just makes no sense he goes MLS and other any top three professional leagues associated with FIFA it, it says $8, but it really means $8,000. And that's also something else, definitely a red flag, is there should not be typos in contracts like this. And really, none of these numbers really make any sense, especially because coming in to the preseason and to the trial, I was up front where I said, I only want to be here for three months. I want to dip in the summer. And let alone the fact that no one's going to pay $8,000 for me, just asking for that much money off of what would have been a $600 total contract is pretty ridiculous but it's also just the way this is written it makes no sense at all the way it's at any top three professional leagues associated with fifa that's essentially saying that manchester united epl has to pay eight thousand dollars and a third tier team in sweden has to pay eight thousand dollars there's just no there's no logic to it and that's something if you see something in a contract that just doesn't make sense like this you definitely just be really wary of it because there could be other things in it too that you know are going to give you troubles in the future so pretty much what this contract is saying is that i would be playing for 10 months for 200 dollars a month and the only way i can make it overseas like i was planning on doing in the summer would be if some club buys me for eight thousand dollars after two months of playing in nisa and it's just like I said, it's not happening. So this 100%, the way this is written is I would be stuck with the Bobcats for 10 months. That's just how it would be, which is not what I was planning on doing, which is why when I first got this contract, I immediately said, no, you need to get rid of the buyout clause because from day one, I'm just saying, I want to come in, help you guys out for as much as I can for three months, and then I'm leaving for Europe in the summer. So in an attempt to get rid of the buyout clause, I just said, fine, let me just, I'll play for free. You guys don't have to pay me anything. Just let me leave in three months. And verbally, they would say while well, talking with my agent that, sure, yeah, that's no problem. And then for whatever reason, they just wouldn't put it in writing in the contract that I'd be allowed to leave. And that's also huge red flag, guys. Never sign something where someone's verbally telling you something different that's written on paper. Because at the end of the day, if they change their mind or ownership changes the club something else happens you never know whatever is written on that contract that you signed is what you're going to be legally obligated to do so just because someone says yeah don't worry like we'll let you leave in two months three months that's fine but just sign this the contract says that you still can't but don't worry we'll let you do it just don't sign that do not sign that you got to make sure that whatever you want or whatever your demands are that 
you only feel comfortable doing are actually signed on paper. So at the end of the day, they officially wouldn't put it in the contract that I could leave whenever I want or just sign a three month contract, something like that. So decided it was best that I can find training. I can just keep myself busy until the summer. And that was pretty much that. Like at this point in my career, that contract didn't make sense for me to sign, but it could have some value to maybe some other players. Maybe you're right out of college. You're lucky enough that you can live with your parents where you're not paying rent for that first couple years out of college. It is technically a professional league and maybe that $200, you know, you're more interested in the experience than the money trying to make a name for yourself in one of these leagues, maybe get noticed by a USL championship team, something like that, and then you can start making a bit better money. And like I said at the beginning of the video, morally, I don't think it's a huge problem that they're offering these types of contracts. You see it all over the world. I do think it's pretty stupid that we couldn't come to an agreement here where apparently me asking to play for free, but I can just leave in three months was somehow me asking too much out of them. But it, you know, it is what it is. They have their goals, I have mine, and we just couldn't meet on the same page for this certain situation. And at the end of the day, I think they did find kind of that, what I was saying before, they found a young keeper who lives in the area. Maybe he can grab some minutes, get some film, and hopefully for him, he can progress on to bigger and better things later on next season. However, this next contract I'm going over, which I was offered in 2018, is nothing more than just a cheap coaching ring fronting as a football club. So this was a club called the Philadelphia Fury in some unsanctioned lead called the ASL. And this contract really is one of the most ridiculous ones that I've ever seen personally. So the contract starts out decent where it looks like your basic salary is $1,000 a month plus accommodations, which at the time meant, I think you had four players to an apartment, two would each share a room. So you don't have your own room, you share a room with somebody and then you have an apartment somewhere in New Jersey. However, outside of training, you were also required to coach for 15 hours per week for free. Pretty much the club would be renting out these coaches or players, and they would rent them out to other clubs to coach. And 15 hours a week is a decent amount of hours for coaching. If you're also gonna be playing and training in the morning, you'd only have a couple hours after that, and then you'd have to go out and coach for about three hours a day, which, it's a pretty heavy workload, and for $1,000 a month, it is really just absurd. I'm pretty surprised that this contract actually is legal. Because what that really comes down to, if you just forget the whole playing part, like pretend you're not even training, if you're working 60 hours a week for $1,000, it's $16 an hour. And $16 an hour is just so absurdly low for coaching. I mean, even on the low end, like 40 50 is still going to be a bit low, but 16 is just, I mean, it's really just a front. What I'm guessing was going on is they would pay these players like $16 an hour for their coaching. They'd kind of write off the training would be free because you're not really getting paid for that. And then they might probably charge these clubs maybe 50, 60 an hour, and they just pocket all of that money that they're getting there. And then if you work more than 15 hours, they increase the rate to where you now you make 30 an hour for those extra coaching sessions. But I don't even know who would have time to fit that into their schedule there to work more than 15 hours coaching while doing training, travel, all of that stuff. So really, like I said, this contract, it's, it's just a front. This isn't, they're not trying to build a club here. They weren't trying to build a club. This is obviously just players being taken advantage of. Like the Bobcats, it's different if you don't want to pay someone to play on your team or if you want to just pay them a couple hundred but you cannot you cannot be like almost just tricking these people into coaching to you for essentially free and this contract gets even sketchier once you scroll down to where you're actually supposed to sign where all of a sudden the number of hours you're required to work changes from 15 to 18 hours and you can bet which is kind of how sketchy this whole contract is they're gonna make you work those 18 hours. They're gonna say that was closest to where you're signing. That's what it is. There's no chance you're gonna end up being able to say, well, I actually thought I signed for only 15 hours. And like I said, with the Bobcats contract, with their typo, you really need to be careful signing anything with any sort of typos or discrepancies. It's never a good sign for when signing a contract. And I do wanna make it clear, even though these two contracts are in the same video going over the same topic, I don't 
really compare the Bobcats contract with this at all. At least with the Bobcats, you know you're not making any money on the field, but you can get off the field, earn some money, and be able to, you know, support yourself with this. With the Philadelphia Fury, I mean, this is, like, essentially just being an indentured servant where they're saying, we'll give you housing, we'll give you enough money for food, and you're just going to be working for us this entire time. You're not going to have any money to spend on it yourself. You're going to be spending all your own gas money, which is going to eat into that $1,000 monthly pay just immediately, especially if you're driving from field to field everywhere because these were pretty spread out. I know some guys were driving 20, 30 minutes to go coach when I was there just on trial for that short week. And really nobody should be signing this contract if they knew what they were getting into from the start. I think it was just a lot of kids right out of college. Maybe they underestimate how many hours it actually is, or they don't know how much coaching actually pays. They probably also had an agent. I think it was just kind of one agent, like setting all of these up where he would just try to find players to bring in here. Maybe he got a cut. But he was telling me if I come play for the Fury for a year that he'll be able to get me a $100,000 contract in Poland. And my response was just, if playing a year in this unsanctioned, I guess technically semi-pro, but amateur league, is you're going to be able to pick me up a $100,000 contract in Europe right away. After that, why can't just, just find me a $12,000, $10,000 contract over in Europe? right now and I can try to build up from there and of course he's telling me that's not how it works but it's really there's no chance there's no player that would have gone from this club and all of a sudden be earning that kind of money so if someone's telling you something like an agent that seems too good to be true it probably is don't buy into the hype of someone talking in your ear it's almost always just talk so that's more or less the video guys I just wanted to go over these two contracts I think it's something that's not really talked a lot about in this space because people don't like really sharing how much they're being paid how much they're being offered because you guys will find out once you start getting into the pro ranks or pushing for the pro ranks it's a lot less than you think it is there's really not a lot of money in football and the funny thing is is the most of the money is actually just in coaching and for you guys thinking of signing your first contracts like i said this philadelphia fury one you would never want to touch out with a 10-foot pole. Maryland Bobcats, there's definitely certain situations where maybe that could work out for you. Trying to make a name for yourself, trying to get some minutes. You have a good setup in the area where maybe the pay isn't that important to you and you're really looking for that experience and exposure at the time. But anyways, that's the video, guys. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Follow us on Instagram, GK. Also, check out aviata.com. Ton of gloves from Aviata. Other trading equipment you guys can buy. Help support the channel. Till next time. Peace. Run that city out in Kansas, slamping in the cut like bandage. I do damage, vandal handle me. These bosses cannot manage me. I am the king of canopy, so rumble in the jungle like a.